So chapter seven, we're going to talk about the development of the placenta. So the placenta is um, is so many things for this for this growing um, embryo and fetus. The placenta is going to be um, the interface between maternal blood and fetal blood. The placenta is going to be responsible for generating um, all of the hormones necessary for um, for maintenance of the of the pregnancy and and um, uh, labor. The placenta is going to act as um, basically this this fetus's life support system. It's going to be through the placenta that the baby gains all of its oxygen, all of its nutrients. Um, the placenta acts as the baby's liver before the liver can can uh, is developed. It acts as the baby's kidneys before it before it's developed, and really nearly every other organ. Uh, before this baby's um, organ systems can actually perform. So the placenta is an incredibly important component of um, fetal existence and fetal survival. So the formation of the placenta involves the formation of um, the two components that make up the placenta. The placenta is made up of fetal tissue and maternal tissue. Okay? And on the fetal side, the fetal tissue is the chorion, the chorionic plate or the chorion and the chorionic villi. So over here, um, we have this tiny little two week pregnancy that's barely anything. Okay? And you can see these, um, we started off with trophoblastic cells that have um, started to differentiate and then at three weeks, you actually start to see um, the trophoblastic cells taking on um, a shape that is already starting to look like the ultimate shape of this um, of the placenta of the fetal side of the placenta. Okay. Uh, and as it elaborates, okay, as this as this embryo gets older and older, you start to see the maturation of the chorion, the tissue that um, surrounds this baby, okay, and the amniotic sac. We see the development of the chorionic villi, the system of, um, of blood vessels that perfuse the, um, the placenta and then get tra and the sends blood to the baby. So if we look at this, um, this is just a really lovely picture of the chorionic tissue that surrounds this tiny little embryo. Okay. So the endometrium is going to be is going to receive this um, embryo. It, we talked about implantation, um, but an important part of development of the placenta and successful implantation and, and the successful pregnancy is a tremendous amount of remodeling that needs to happen of this endometrial lining. Okay. So remember we had our um, myometrial layer, we had our middle compacta layer that had all these spiral and straight arteries, we had the outer compacta layer. Now when implantation happens, when this, um, this embryo starts to burrow into the endometrium, it, and those syncytotrophoblast cells start to um, invade the endometrial stroma and trigger that decidual reaction, the transformation of those stromal cells into maternal um, stromal cells, the, the maternal side of the placenta. Part of that process is a tremendous amount of remodeling of these spiral and straight arteries. Okay? Now these spiral and straight arteries before implantation and before remodeling were basically composed of what you would normally see in an artery wall. So you'd see an endometrial um, inner layer, you'd see some, a little bit of connective tissue, some, some significant amounts of smooth muscle. Right? 
Um, and that's what these spiral arteries, the walls of these arteries look like. But these trophoblast cells, they invade and they invade very deeply. They get down into the very deepest layers of the endometrium. They invade all the way to this compacta area. And what they do is they completely remodel these spiral arteries. Okay? They strip down the um, smooth muscle of the artery wall and replace them with fibrous tissue that basically transforms these spiral arteries into these low resistance vascular channels. Okay? And I say low resistance meaning that the diameter of these vessels increases okay, so that there's no resistance to flow. And, it, and a, another very, very important part of the remodeling is that these spiral and straight arteries no longer respond to circulating vasoconstrictors. Okay. So this, the blood flow that comes through these uterine arteries the blood flow to the placenta and to the baby cannot be altered by vasoconstrictors in, uh, circulating in the body. Okay. So that means that this, this um, blood flow through those spiral arteries and straight arteries to the placenta is the rate of blood flow is always very high and it basically doesn't change. So that kind of, um, the artery remodeling that happens is an incredibly important part of having a successful, having this baby grow successfully. Okay. And as we'll talk about um, in, in some of the later sections of the class, one of the um, most devastating conditions in pregnancy, complicated complications of pregnancy, called preeclampsia, really one of the primary causes of preeclampsia actually stems from an inadequate trophoblastic invasion and remodeling of these spiral arteries. Okay? And it compromises blood flow to the, to the baby. Okay? So we'll talk about that um, when, it comes to, when the time comes. So this remodeling of the spiral and straight arteries, um, along with the development of the um, umbilical uh, vessels, it turns the, what used to be sort of the normal uterine circulatory route into what we call the utero-placental circulation. Okay. So this, this remodeling, which is extensive um, of the blood vessels in the uterus, and the blood vessels um, originating from the placenta that will lead to the baby, the umbilical vessels, turns this uterine um, circulatory system into the utero-placental um, circulation. Okay. So it's another view of something that we've, we've been looking at, which is uh, this idea that you have this invasion of these trophoblastic cells, the formation of these um, chorionic villi okay, on the baby side, the production of the decidua, which forms the maternal side of the placenta. Okay. And basically, these chorionic villi start to arrange themselves around maternal vessels and start to form these interfaces between um, maternal blood and baby's blood. Okay. Until finally we get to the, the mature stage of the placenta. Okay. So the placenta, this is a, a fully developed mature placenta, and the placenta is composed of um, fetal, a fetal component and a maternal component. The fetal component is the um, chorionic plate and the chorionic villi, and the maternal component is the decidua basalis and the maternal blood vessels. Okay. And so 
in between the decidua basalis right there and the chorionic plate and the chorionic villi, in between we have what's called the intervillous space. Right? The intervillous space. And this intervillous space is um, filled with maternal blood. Right? And you can see we have maternal arteries that drain into this intervillous space and bathe the um, chorionic villi, those little blood vessels of the chorionic villi. And then as there is um, very selective exchange, the venous blood is then drained out of the placenta through the maternal veins. Okay. So um, maternal arteries feed these in, this intervillous space, fills it with blood, and then maternal veins sort of drain it away. And on the, the baby side, right, on the baby side, we have the umbilical cord, which is composed of a, um, a single vein and two arteries, right, a single vein and two umbilical arteries. And the, um, the it's these blood vessels that carry baby, carry blood um, to and from the baby or in between the baby and the placenta. Right? So a mature placenta is a disc shaped structure right, with a thickness of about three centimeters and a diameter of about 20 centimeters and it typically weighs about 50 grams um, and or half a kilo. And on the fetal side, it, it tends to be shiny, okay, because of the amniotic uh, membrane that's on the fetal side uh, and the attachment of the umbilical cord to the chorionic plate is very visible on the fetal side. And the maternal side is going to be um, dull uh, and divided into 35 lobes, so to speak. The umbilical cord that connects baby and placenta is, um, is, as I said, composed of two arteries and one vein, and it's surrounded by this substance that we call Wharton's jelly, and that includes um, collagen, muscle, and some polysaccharides. It's a very particular kind of um, substance. The umbilical vessels are longer than the, the cord actually is, and so they tend to be twisted and spiraled within the cord. And the cord is usually inserted into the corner of the placenta, but it could be attached really at any point along the placenta. The maximal length of, of the umbilical cord that tends to get reached around 30 weeks is about 55 to 60 centimeters and about two and a two or two and a half centimeters wide. Um, and when a baby is born, the umbilical uh, vessels tend to constrict about four to five seconds after birth. Um, and usually what happens is the, the um, arteries are constrict, but the, the vein stays open so that the blood flow to the baby is actually um, maintained for several minutes after, um, after birth. So just another view of this placenta. So you can see this disc-shaped placenta. You can see the, the lobes, right? Uh, sometimes referred to, referred to as cotyledons. And you can see these um, chorionic villi extending out from the chorionic plate and then leading to the umbilical, the umbilical, um, uh, the umbilical cord. So, even though the intervillous space is filled with maternal blood and it's bathing these chorionic villi, maternal blood and fetal blood never mix in the placenta because covering these um, uh, villous vessels, right, the, the vessels in the chorionic villi, covering them are several layers of um, membranes that we refer to as the placental barrier. 
So for anything to move from maternal blood into the baby or back from baby to maternal blood, it really has to pass through this, this multiple layered placental barrier. So if we consider some of the substances that tend to cross the uh, placental barrier, um, they will cross via um, very particular transport mechanisms. So passive diffusion, simple diffusion, um, the sort of substances that are going to cross in this way are water, electrolytes, oxygen, carbon dioxide, um, uh, urea, amines, fat-soluble vitamins, um, which you know you can imagine all of these things are are intended to cross. Um, narcotics, antibiotics, barbiturates, anesthetics; those are going to be things that mom's taking that you may not want it to cross, but it certainly will because they're lipid soluble. So. Um, in order for these things to, to cross the placenta, cross a, the placenta into the baby, there just has to be a concentration gradient for it. Okay. Facilitated diffusion, glucose and oxygen can, can cross through facilitated diffusion mechanisms, um, active transport of amino acids and some water-soluble vitamins, some um, minerals like calcium, iron, iodine. We also have um, the movement of certain substances like large proteins, globulins, phospholipids, antibodies, viruses, and they cross through an active transport mechanism that we call pinocytosis or endocytosis. Okay? Basically this um, movement of uh, through vesicles. And uh, we have bulk flow movement of water and electrolytes. Um, intact blood cells don't usually cross, but every once in a while you've got a broken capillary and it allows it to cross. And, um, and those are the major substances that are going to move across and the mechanism that's, that's used.